ordinary horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the ready-to-eat oat cereal that gives you go power, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. Cowboy Tom is a boy of six. He knows all kinds of cowboy tricks. He can rope a steer because he knows he's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. He's feeling his Cheerios. 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 You bet, Cheerios, the oat cereal that needs no cooking. Every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle-building food. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. Yes, the good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones, and muscles. And besides giving you go power, Cheerios is downright wonderful tasting. That toasted oat flavor is really something. And when you add milk and your favorite fruit, say some sliced bananas, you're in for a delicious breakfast treat. Get the whole family off to a good start every morning with Cheerios. Then you'll hear people say... He's feeling his Cheerios. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let go, big fella. I'm Silver. Hooray! The woman sheriff of Gunstock was at her desk in the jail office. A former school teacher with an Eastern education, she was young and attractive. As she attended the paperwork connected with her duties, another woman looked on. She was a frontier type, hatchet-faced, lanky, and seemingly as ageless as a piece of petrified wood. Rejoicing in the name of Liz Yancey, she not only protected the law lady from scandal, but served as jail cook and turnkey. Liz was saying... Looky here, Claire. You're wearing yourself out of looking for them vermin secured your husband. Liz, I'll never rest until they're punished. When I was sworn into office, I took another oath. A silent oath to square accounts for Dick. That's all well and good, but... Oh, oh Quince Rockwell. Hello, Mr. Rockwell. Mrs. Lee, the stage has been held up again. What? This time at Crossbones Gulch. Oh. The Owl Hoot's got another Wells Fargo box. Good heaven. I'm reporting this because it's an express company rule and I'm its agent. Not that I think it'll do any good. I'll put Deputy Taylor on the case as soon as he returns. This makes the fifth hole up around here in a year. My company has lost better than $100,000. Something's got to be done about it. Mr. Rockwell... Your company has had its best special agents hunting for the stage robbers. They seem to have failed as badly as the sheriff's office. That's no excuse. A woman isn't fit to be sheriff. Her place is at home fetching up a family. You sure didn't get much fetching up. Mrs. Lee, I'm going to get up petitions to oust you from office. Nearly every man in the county will sign it, and so will a lot of women. Mark my word. Liz, what shall I do? Bill, there's been another stage robber. I heard about it at the cafe. Rounded up a posse, and I'll be heading for Crossbow's Gulf as soon as I get my rifle. And saddle up. The back door open, Liz? Why shouldn't it be? You're never bringing any prisoners. Yeah, I'll get those stage robbers this time. Claire, I figure that sidewinder's trying to undermine you and get your badge. Several hours later, Liz Yancey retired to a side room in which she slept with a Colt 44 under her pillow and a sawed-off shotgun leaning against the bed. Mrs. Lee remained at her desk. She had taken a record book from an open desk drawer. Then the door opened. What? A mask man. Uh, please don't be frightened. I'm a friend. Friends show their faces. I suppose you murdered my husband and have come back to murder me. Mrs. Lee, I'm here to volunteer the services of an Indian friend and myself. We want to help you solve that case. Then why are you wearing a mask? If my face were to become known to outlaws, it would handicap me in bringing them to justice. So you're a professional bounty hunter. No, I I don't work for rewards or pay. Oh, uh, perhaps...
Perhaps a silver bullet will identify me. Please take it. Yes, it is a silver bullet, but it means nothing to me. I still don't understand your motive in offering aid. Because I believe in maintaining law and order. Does that explain my purpose? It does indeed. Mr. Do you know that the gunstock stage was robbed again today? My friend heard about it and told me. We'd have gone to the scene, but a posse was already on the way, and I wanted to avoid being questioned about my mask. I believe there's some connection between the stage robberies and my husband's murder. Oh, what makes you think so? Here is the last report Dick entered in his record book. It's dated August 17th and reads, First stage robbery county ever had was reported at 1 p.m. today. Five masked men took express box containing $11,000, went to scene, failed to pick up trail, but found heel shot from one outlaw's boot by stage passenger. That's all he wrote. Two days later, he was shot from an alley here in Gunstock. That would seem to indicate that he learned something he didn't record. Why do you say that? Because professional hold-up men rarely kill a sheriff unless he becomes dangerous to them. I have the boot heel in this drawer. Here it is. What do you make of it? Well, it's an ordinary heel as far as the leather manufacturer go. But it tells a story. Posse fellows, back him, Asabi. And not find anything. Well, Mrs. Lee, this is my friend, Toto. How do you do? Oh. We've had a lot of experience trailing Indians who are afoot. Whether they wore moccasins or white men's boots, their tracks were easy to identify. Uh, Mrs. Lee, do any local Indians, perhaps Indians working as cowboys, wear boots? No, of none. Oh, Bill, I didn't hear you come in. A chap put it in the back way and heard part of the bunco these fellas been handing you. Who in blazes are they? They're going to investigate Dick's murder and the stage robbery. Oh, well, I like that. Here I've been doing all your work for you, then you turn around and hire a mask owl hoot and a redskin. You aiming to fire me? Perhaps I should discharge you. You do, and I'll help Quince Rockwell throw you out of office. I'll Bill show you... Bill Taylor, you're through. Give me your badge, gun, and gun belt. They're county property. Like blazes, I will. You're the sheriff, sir. Why, you... Don't draw that gun. <laughs> Let go of my arm. Unbuckle his gun belt, Toto. Uh, <laughs> there. We got it off. Now there. I'll unpin that badge. There it comes. I'll take those things. You'll pay for this. Taylor, you're a private citizen now. As another private citizen, I'm advising you to forget that you ever saw my friend and me. I'm not forgetting anything. Mister, did I do the right thing? Yes, Mrs. Lee. But Bill may make trouble for all of us. Toto, follow him. I'll meet you at camp. Me, sir, we can stop it. Like all braggarts, Bill was filled with self-pity over his discharge. Making the rounds of the cafes, he talked long and loudly about the incompetence and ingratitude of the woman sheriff. Few men sympathized with him, though many already had signed petitions asking for her removal. But at the Lazy H Cafe, he found a really interested listener in Chad Harrison, who owned the place as well as a ranch with the same name. Well, Bill, what is our lady sheriff going to do without a man deputy? He's huh? already got two fellas working for her. Well, you don't say. Anyone I know? I reckon not. One's an engine, the other wears a mask. Hmm. Heard him talking about a boot heel that Dick Lee found after the first stage robbery. He figured it came from a boot worn by an engine cowpoke. Well, that means he'll be out looking for that kind of an engine. Yeah. Hey, Chad. Come to think of it, you've got a redskin rider on your ranch. He's the only boot-wearing engine in these parts. Uh-huh. Now, uh, look, Chad. You don't want any crooks working on your spread. Suppose you and I handle a case together. I'd split the reward with you. Bill, I'm getting interested. Right out to my ranch tomorrow. We'll talk about it some more. <laughs> I'll be there. An hour later, Chad Harrison was in the bunkhouse at his ranch. With him were five ill-favored men who listened intently as he repeated what the ex-deputy had told him. He was saying... Well, the way I figure it, that boot heel put Dick Lee onto us. He knew about you, Comanche Joe. Was smart enough to put two and two together before we plugged him. Now it's put Bill onto you. I may leave that mask man out here. Yeah, you're right, boss. Yeah. Now, on the way here, I figured out a way to get rid of Bill Taylor and the mask man at the same time. How's that? I told you the mask man uses silver bullets and had a ruckus with Bill. Well, we'll make some silver bullets and drill Bill with them. 
That alone ought to be enough to convict the masked man, but to make it even stronger, we'll swear we saw him do the shooting. Boss, you always come up with good ideas. Bill is coming out here tomorrow. By tomorrow night, he'll be dead. And the masked man will be in jail waiting to hang. Continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. All over the country, in every direction, how you, how you doing is the question, and here's what the happy, happy people have to say. Eating our Wheaties and a do, 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 and okay. Okay. That's the word up north. Just ask the champions. Up north, we know what Wheaties mean to guys like Slug and Harvey Keene. We love to see him belt that ball and make the fielders climb the wall. And Richie Ashburn, yes indeed, he plays baseball at Wheaties speed. Just watch him flash from base to base. This boy could win in any race. Yes, sir, Harvey Keene and Richie Ashburn are long-time Wheaties fans. Both of them know there's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Wheaties, breakfast of champions. Keep on eating your Wheaties and you'll be do 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 and okay. Now to continue Toto returned to the masked man's camp A short distance from the town of Gunstock Nobody listened long to Taylor But one fella Him run Lazy H Cafe Did you learn the cafe keeper's name? Him Chad Harrison Got a ranch called Lazy H Only Indian cowboy around here Work there How did you learn that? Me meet another Indian in town. Him tell me about a writer called Comanche Joe, who wear boots. Oh, you did well, Toto. We'll scout around Chad Harrison's ranch tomorrow. On the following day, the stage robber known as Blackie was busy in the blacksmith shop, melting and molding silver coins into forty-five caliber bullets. Chad Harrison appeared in the doorway. Hey, you'll have to hurry that job, Lucky. Taylor may be here any time now. Yeah, I've finished a dozen, boss. Yeah, that'll be plenty. Here they are. Here they look good enough to fool anyone. I'll load my two six-shooters. Where are the other boys? Yeah, over on Horse Creek, burying that Wells Fargo box we lifted yesterday. That's what you told them to do, isn't it? Right. I didn't want it around here with all this spying going on. Yeah, I'll be able to bust it open later. Yeah, here comes Taylor now. Need my help, boss? No, no, no. He doesn't suspect me. Oh! Oh! oh. Howdy, Ted. Well, howdy, Bill. Light will go to the house. Sure. Steady one. I'd have been here sooner, but I had to take some petitions over to Red Bull. Now, where's that Comanche Joe? Well, maybe that's him over on the hill. Eh? I don't see a living thing there. No, and you'll never see one anywhere again. Hey, what the... Snooper, that fixes you. Yeah, that's easy done, boss. Is he dead? What do you think? I put every one of the silver slugs from one gun into him. Yeah, what's next? I'll ride back to town and start the story going that the mask man killed Bill. The sound of the gunshots which had snuffed out the life of the ex-deputy had carried far in the still afternoon air. The Lone Ranger and Toto, who had been looking for a trail sign which would link the ranch with the scene of the robbery in Crossbones Gulch, heard them and raced in the direction from which they had come. We not see anybody around, Kibasabe. There's a man on the ground at the ranch house door. Maybe him got shot. Pull up. Pull up. Pull up. Pull up. Cover me while I dismount and examine him. Uh-huh. What you find? This man is Bill Taylor. He's dead. Shot in the back. Fellow who shoot him not have much start. Those hoof prints over there look very fresh. You used to the big fellow. Come on, Sue. Get him up, Scout. Holding their horses to a walk, the masked man and Indian examined the tracks. Toto pointed. Three horses been here a little while ago. One go away without rider. Other two horses take fellas toward Horse Creek and Gunstock. Me follow that trail, Kimasabi? Yes, I'll follow the single track. One silver, Scout! Lone Ranger, who had unconsciously picked Chad Harrison's trail, followed it to the edge of gun stock without sighting the man. He rode through an alley to the rear of the jail. Oh, 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 easy, steady now. Where he dismounted and entered. His first intimation that he himself was in grave danger 
came when the formidable Liz Yancey stepped out of the jail kitchen and thrust the twin barrels of her sawed-off shotgun against his back with a command. Reach, fella, reach. My hands are up. You're making a mistake. Don't you know me? I know you're a killer. Claire, I've got him. Bring him here. Move along before my trigger finger gets itchy. Mrs. Lee, I to consider myself a prisoner. You certainly are. Take his shooting irons, Claire. You may have them. There, Liz. I have his guns. Now I'll take his mask. Then you can lock him up with his friend. Are you holding my friend, Toto? I've charged him with murder, just as I shall charge you. Though it appears that you're the real killer. I have more than eyewitness evidence against you. Oh, what is that? The silver bullets taken from Taylor's body. There they are on my desk. In all probability, you were the only man in the West who fired such bullets. I see. The outlaws have managed to use the law against me. How can you deny the evidence of those bullets? May I examine them? Well, I see no harm in that. But watch them closely, Liz. Yeah. These bullets never came from my guns. Don't tell me that. I have here a silver bullet which you gave me. Your belt is filled with them. Mrs. Lee, the silver in my bullets came from my silver mine. It's pure silver and soft as lead. You can scratch the bullet I gave you with a fingernail. But it would take a knife to mark the bullets that killed Taylor. Please compare them yourself. Yes, I see now that there is a difference. But what does it mean? It means that the murder bullets were made by the outlaws for the purpose of framing me. I knew about the boot heel. I believe that your husband and Taylor also knew. Mister, I'm beginning to believe you. But I can't let you go. I can't arrest a man like Harrison. The position is difficult. The men here have turned against me. Not one would join a posse, especially if he knew I wanted Harrison and his riders. There's a way of getting them into jail without resorting to the use of a posse. Heaven help me. I'll do as you say. Summoned from the Lazy H Cafe by Liz Yancey, Chad Harrison and his five gangsters trooped into the jail office a short time later. They were in high spirits over the outcome of their trick. Harrison was saying... Well, Mrs. Lee, you sure did a good job when you let that masked gunslinger walk right into jail and locked him up. You know, I'm in favor of letting you hold your job. I'm going to let everybody know it. That's Let's right. forego the pleasantries. This is a serious matter. Liz, open the cell block door. Yeah. Please follow me. I don't like James. Uh, where is the last man? In the next cell. Now, do you identify him as the killer? Why, you let him keep his mask on. Certainly. You said he was masked when he shot Taylor, so I wanted you to see him with a mask on. You wouldn't know him without it. Oh, yes, yes, you're right. Uh, and uh, I identify him. Isn't he the killer, boys? Yeah, yeah, sure it's him, all right. Hey, where'd our lady sheriff go? Hey, she locks us in. Hey, let us out of here. Have her on the door. We want out. Fellas, this might be a trap. Hey, look, the masked man and engine are out of their cell. They've got guns. You're covered. Put your hands straight out. Then turn and lean against the wall. You try for guns, you'll get shot. No, no, don't shoot. We're doing as you say. Hello, take their guns while I keep them off balance. Uh At the same time, the peephole in the cell block door slid open. Liz Yancey looked in. Seeing her, Chad Harrison shouted. Hey, look what they're doing to us. I've got eyes. I can see. Who owns that blue round hose out in front? I do. What about it? The saddlebags are full of money. What? 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 The Quince Rockwell says was in the Wells Fargo box. Stolen yesterday. Why, you double crosser. You got that box home before you buried it. No wonder it took you so long. Hey, Liz, these fellas only work for me. You can lock them up for all I care, but I want out. Who's a double crosser now? Chad was in the stage robberies as deep as we were. Oh, listen to him. I'm a rancher with a good reputation. I can't help what my riders do. I think you're all a battle of owls. Look him, Sabi. Maybe this gun show who killed Taylor. Me take two guns from Chad Harrison. One got lead bullets in it. Other got silver bullets. Munching a tonneau, the outlaw leader made a desperate effort to wrest the telltale gun from his hand. You not get guns. But the Indian, heavily burdened as he was with guns and gun belts taken from the six bandits, was unable to keep his grasp on the weapon. Jerking it from his hand, Harrison whirled and fired at the lone ranger. The hard silver slug ricocheted from a cell bar close to the masked man's head. A split second later, one of his own guns blazed, and the duel of silver bullets was over. As the heavy 45 slug knocked Harrison to the floor and the gun slid away from his broken arm, Comanche Joe tried to scoop it up, but straightened when the masked man advanced on him with the order. Back to the wall. All of you. He's going to massacre us. Come on, don't do it, mister. Not George. I made the silver bullets that killed Taylor, but Chad did the shooting. He shot Dick Lee, too, and engineered all the stage holders. Uh, 
Dirty double crosser. You're sending me to the gallows. Then hang. I'm saving my own neck if I can. Yeah, me too. A few minutes later, the Lone Ranger and Toto were in the jail office with Mrs. Lee and Liz Yancey. Liz had locked the outlaws in cells and had summoned a doctor for the leader against whom they had turned. Now that our work here is finished, we'll ride on. I'm sorry to see you leave. We may meet again. Here's the name and address of a padre who will know how to reach me. Communicate with him if you need our help. I certainly shall do so. And thank you for everything. Come on, Hutto. Uh -huh. Adios, Mrs. Lee. Adios, Liz. Adios. Claire, who is that mash man? Liz, it took a long while for me to put things together. But when I thought about that man's mask and his white horse and the silver bullet, I realized who he is. He's the Lone Ranger. of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Listen to the Lone Ranger, brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.